Hello, greetings from Hamburg, Germany. Hello, <laughs> greetings from San Francisco. How do, how do you do? Have have fine weather here? Is dark and rainy? Okay, it's an evening, so. Oh, it's um, sun shining, but it's probably about in, it's in sunshine in its seventies. But I don't know. I kind of prefer dark and rainy. I like moody weather. Uh everything but we hope that we get a little bit snow to christmas but it's too warm now here in germany so i didn't think so before for may next year we don't have snow oh no <laughs> that's, that's the best part of christmas yes but something changes so now get to work <laughs> um how is it to become part of a marvel comic universe oh it's been so exciting. Uh, I went to the Comic Con in San Diego and I you know, I've been there before but never a part of the Marvel universe and it was just so it kind of you know, it just kinda of blew me away because we're up there sitting in front of all these people on this panel and there's so many people that it, I I don't know, like it, they just started kind of like vibrating and waving in my head. It was just really really intense, like very intense energy. So It's really, it's really an honor to be a part of the Marvel universe. Is it something sometimes strange that this fan base is so big and every every character, uh, if it it's good or evil, has this big fan base and fans? Yeah, it's um, it's really intense. You know, I got to look at the DC universe a little bit, and you know, but from an outside perspective. And then, you know, I always know that DC and Marvel are constant rivals. And so then to be a part of the Marvel and actually, like, be a part of one of them is just, it's very, yeah, it's a very big deal. How did you prepare for this rule? Uh, physical training, of course, I think. Or did you read the comics or get a buyer from Stan Lee, personally, maybe? Yeah, I am. Um, well, actually, I did get some of the comics. Ed Screen, who plays Ajax, he took me to the comic book store and... He kind of like introduced me to Deadpool comics and um, gave my introduction when I landed in Vancouver where we filmed. And I did a little bit of my you know research online for my uh, my character Angel, Angel Dust, and there wasn't a ton of information, so there was a little bit of room to play with. So I thought that was kind of nice. But yeah, I have to attribute all my education to Mr. Ed Screen. <laughs> <laughs> He, he kind of was all of our mentors in the comic book world because he's been passionate about it from when he was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> so you uh, you and Ed Screen are the uh, an evil dynamic duo, I would say. How was it to work with him? I I there's certain people that you work with in life that you will just hold close to your heart forever, and Ed is one of those people for me. He is he's so passionate, he's so thoughtful. And, uh, you know, in every scene that we were in together, which was most of my scene, he was always, you know, talking about, you know, we would talk through the scene and, you know, what we would be feeling and thinking and, you know, our backstories. And so it was really, really special to work with somebody who was just that passionate to kind of be involved and, you know, really cares for not only, like, the characters, but for you as a person. Like, I genuinely think that you'll, you'll always be somebody that I... Um, I can stir a friend, so I, I want the world for Ed. He's such a talent and so wonderful. So he's he's definitely one of those beautiful people that you you walk away from a job and you think, thank God I got paired up with that guy. <laughs> it should have been like so bad, but it, instead, you know, he made he made the experience that much better. You and him, you, you both play bad guys. Is it um, more fun to play an evil character, or is it more challenging? I think. It, it was really actually challenging for me because my personality is a little bit lighter, you know? So I don't know. I always get these roles where people are telling me to stop smiling. Every single director I've worked with, they're like, Gina, stop smiling. <laughs> so it's been a little bit of a problem. But I actually ended up enjoying it, you know? It, you definitely get a different vibe from the set. You, know? you feel like you're bringing the darkness and you're bringing, you know, we're doing something awful to these people in the story. And so you really have to kind of like look into your um, more devious sick side <laughs> and learn to enjoy it, you know, and, and learn to accept it. And I think it takes some of the pressure off of having to be the good guy. So I did I did enjoy being the villain, actually. I, I didn't enjoy 
enjoy being the bad one. But we'll see how it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, do also many fight scenes, or it's all, mostly the comic movies have spectacular fight scenes how did you was it a challenge for you these kind of fights you are trained but it's another dimension i think yeah this was a lot different because my fight scene consists of a lot of i'm fighting a cgi character so an a cgi character who is much larger than larger than life you know he's huge he's like seven four <laughs> <laughs> And so that was really, everything had to be so much bigger. And since I have, my angel dust has like the um, adrenaline superhuman strength, so she can go against this massive character. But it was just very, um, it, it was like the body language had to be so much stronger. And the um, every time I punched, it couldn't be right in front of me. It had to be like, you know, it had to be like, what, like eight, you know, five, six feet above me. So everything mm -hmm. had to be that much bigger. And um, I'd never done a CGI fight. And I, you know, I can't tell, you know, I really do like the physicality of fighting somebody, you know, another human being. But um, I think it was a really good lesson. I think it's something that I can add to my experiences. And, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I've never, I don't know if you've ever seen a, you know, a, a human fight, like a CGI person like this. So I hope it comes out well. <laughs> For director Tim Miller, uh, Deadpool is his first really big movie that he directs uh, how was it to work with him was had he many ideas uh, did you tell uh, he, how was it, for, for what kind of director is he he is absolutely such he's such a natural and such an amazing uh i mean the, the thing with tim miller is you know a lot of people say oh yeah you know this director is really honest tim is very honest <laughs> He is hilariously honest in a way that he can tell you how, you know, what you were doing wrong by just really just like, you know, I remember I was jumping off the box and I was like looking, at, you know, landing and trying to look strong. And he's under the tent over in like the, you know, film area. And all I hear, so I jump off the box and I, I land and he just starts cracking up. <laughs> like just roaring with laughter in the tent. And, you know, he just kind of like, I'm like, oh my gosh, that could have made me so, so awful. But knowing that it's him and knowing that he's just there to make everybody look the best he can and that Deadpool is sending his baby, he just, you know, he comes off. Like, the things that come out of his mouth seem so offensive, but they're not. He's really, he really means them. <laughs> <laughs> he really means them to help you be a better person, which I think myself and the rest of the cast just, absolutely loved that about him because there's nothing phony about it when he was telling you something maybe the words seemed a little bit abrasive but they would always mean the best for you know for you so you, you know he's just got a really genius talent of dealing with people and i think that um after this movie comes out he'll be able to do whatever he wants and i hope he does because more people in the world need to experience a person like tim miller <laughs> Yes, I have my interview tomorrow with him, um, so I will see how he is. So. Oh, good luck. Good yes. Luck. <laughs> Thank you very much. So on the other side, we have Ryan Reynolds. Uh, not even uh, he plays the uh, Deadpool, the anti-hero. Also, how could man say? He tries to push this project for, forward for years, fights for it, uh, in, in times that it was set on ice, I would say. How, what do you think about that? What, that he, um, he was trying to get this made for such a long time? Yes, yes. Um, yeah, he, to see this happening for him, so I met him, uh, I didn't realize how tall he was in person. I thought that he, you know, on screen he looked so much shorter, and then when you get around him, you're like, oh my God, he's <laughs> quite tall. And he was so, I've met a lot of celebrities in my life, and he was one of the most gentle, you know, kind of really normal, not, you know, no inflated ego, and just really straightforward, just, you know, wants to do a good job, and crumbled. So I was, you know, knowing that all about him, and then seeing that he finally got this movie made, and, you know, being a part of it was just really kind of, really surreal to watch. Sometimes I'm like, oh, all right, I'm in this movie, I'm not just watching something good happened to, you know, somebody I know. 
Yeah, Ryan Reynolds. He was whenever I was reading the comics, he was the voice in my head. He was made for this movie, and um, so it's really nice to see that he's getting it. He got it made after all that time, and he's one of those people I can definitely say that deserves it. You know, mm-hmm. he deserves something great to happen to him too. So, he's a very humble, awesome human being. Really happy for him. Yeah, that sounds great. I heard that he is a man who improvises in his play, and Despo is a character that is prist- yeah improvises uh, as, as a character. Many is it true that he is, or is he fixed on the lines from the script? Oh no, he they him. I mean, <laughs> he goes. He's definitely involved, and and on the day. You know, being on the receiving end of those jokes is very humbling and hilarious. Like, he will just rattle out some of these, like, the most hilarious, like, jokes that just come to his mind. And he'll have the entire crew and cast laughing. Like, it was, like, really phenomenal to see, because I've, I've never been in a comedy, and I've never even really seen people, you know, ad lib like that. And so to see him just kind of... See, this, like, this is the way he really thinks on a normal basis. Like, he is a comedian in there. He's very hilarious. And so uh, it was really fun. It was like being watching stand-up comedy, except for it was being filmed. <laughs> This movie contains, like you said, uh, many green screen and CGI effects. Is it, uh, and, and you've done in the past other movies like The Fast and Furious or Haywire hey that no, have not so many special effects of these kinds. Is it more challenging to do special effects CGI movies or realistic based uh, movies for you? Yeah, I think that in all the movies I like to watch, I always tend to steer away from the CGI. I've never really been a fan of CGI, but in doing this movie, I I now have a new newer appreciation for what goes behind, you know, putting all this together, and it is a lot. And it's just a different, you know, I think I probably still like the more, I think I like more non-CGI, you know, things, but I now have an appreciation for what, you know, what goes into making the CGI movie, and, you know, it's, it's, it takes a lot more time, I think, and... Uh, it's just, it's next level. So, um, we'll see. I haven't, you know, maybe I'll, ha- I'll watch this movie and be like, I love it. Or maybe I'll watch this movie and be like, yeah, no, I love it again. <laughs> we'll see. Yes, we we will see. I only know, like you mostly, about you know more than me, but I only see the trailer and it looks spectacular, but uh, mostly of the movies look spectacular in the trailer and uh, there is some that disappoints after that. But uh, most, right. but the, mostly of the c- comic book hard, movies right? not. So... Yeah. Well, uh, just as far as like, I think, um, as far as like being an actor, I think it's always better to be doing the, you know... Uh, I think it's always better to have that, like, interaction. Like, in, in fight scenes, I always like to have, like, a real, you know, a, you know, there's so much energy that goes on between two human beings in, in a fight scene, you know. So I think that it is a little bit more difficult when you come to bring CGI into that. And, you know, it takes a little bit of that authenticity of, like, energy away. But I do think that with the Deadpool movie, it's going to be kind of appropriate because that it's really a funny comedy And so the, it's, you know, like some of these uh, superhero movies tend to try to get a little bit too deep or whatever, and then they throw in some CGI and you're just really confused, your senses are just off. So with Deadpool, the whole movie is hilarious, and it's got really, it's got good story beats, but it's hilarious and it's constantly moving forward, and I think that in that kind of circumstance, CGI can really complement it. I see. I, I forget one scratch <laughs> to Angel Dust. Um, is, how do you set this character, or like put? Um, see, do, you, do you see this character? I, might, I know the, the Wikipedia um, biography, but how do you set? Uh, put, um, you know, how do you make this for yourself how, um, to change this character or see this character? I, I see her as. I think you know. I think that in her backstory, she left her home when she found out she had these mutant powers and then she she got, she kind of got involved one of those you know sense of people who get involved with the wrong crowd and then did just a hundred percent of himself to that crowd and so Ajax was the person that taught her everything that she knows and what they're, they're doing and so she kind of um, really just really 
the only thing that she really sees in life is Ajax. Like, that is her, that's her point. You know, that's the only person that can tell her, do this or don't do this, because she listens to him from, from whatever happens, you know, to her in being lost and confused, she found somebody that she listened to, and he's the only one she listens to. And so, basically, uh, you know, kind of like those, those girls that go off and find, like, the really wrong guy. <laughs> <laughs> like, she, uh, to me, like, Ajax is her. She, she'd do anything for him, and, you know. So, so they ended up doing this, uh, you know, making super slaves and, and, you know, making people who are dying into these mutants. And, you know, I think that they look at their jobs like, hey, well, we're saving their lives. You know, they're not going to die. But um, at the same time, they're still doing something very awful and maybe death at that point would have been more welcome. So so I think that, you know, she's a villain, but you always have to, when you're playing a villain, you have to kind of figure out, you know, where is that person coming from and learn how to justify, you know, the decisions that she's made to get to where she's at. And she's just a very stoic, quiet, strong, and even, like, strong person who just, you know, has this one job in life, and that's what she does. Very simple. What is the greatest fun for you as an actor? See uh, the audience laugh, like the movie, or see good critics, or I read good critics, or what makes you feel good when you, uh, as an actor? I think when people start seeing your potential, or they, they see, you know, because most of what I've done has just been, it's been action, you know. So they, you haven't really gotten to see a bunch of my personality come through, except for the aggressive action side. And so I think that, you know, when people do appreciate how natural you made that look and how believable you made that scene or that fight scene appear, you know, and how they say, you know, like you don't punch or look like, you know, any other actress. You have a, a set skill. I, I think that feels really good. But I think one of the best feelings I've ever had is, you know, doing it more of an emotional scene in one of my movies where it was kind of like... you. You, you know, you have to get very emotional, and then the rest of the set is in tears because, you know, that's not something they expected from somebody who just does action. And if I can figure out how to do some more of that, I'd be a very happy girl. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we will see. Right now it's been action for me, but we'll see if I can somehow manage to get to a, a different kind of um, dramatic or different story. But you've done the action well. I like... All of your movies, uh, of if Haywire is Fast and Furious, and I would think will like you in this role too. So I will for watch forward or look forward for the film next year. I press my thumb that it was a success, but I think it will. Comic movies are always Somewhere making a well. success. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and Deadpool's kind of like the um, the underdog too. So I hope that I hope the world for Deadpool because I know all the people that worked on it and they really do deserve you know, the yeah. best to happen to it. So hopefully it comes out well and people like it.